Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear students, I'm happy to uh, contact you again with this uh, new lecture. Uh, this lecture is supposed to be lecture 15. Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about the uh, gliding or approximate sounds where and yet. These are actually problematic sounds in the phonemic analysis of English. Why they are problematic? Because, I'm going to explain it, they are pronounced like vowels, yet they are considered or dealt with as consonants. From, uh, in other words, in other words, we say they are phonetically, that is in terms of their actual pronunciation, they are vowels. Phonetically, wa and ye are vowels because their actual pronunciation resembles the actual pronunciation of vowels, while phonologically they are consonants. That is, in terms of distribution, they act like consonants and they behave like consonants. Let's see in details what does this mean. Let's start with the pronunciation, that is the phonetic uh, basis of the description of ya and dwe. Actually, these sounds are sometimes called gliding, sometimes called approximate sounds, and there is another sound or another name for these uh, uh, sounds, which is semi-vowels. They are called semi-vowels. In Arabic, we call it ashbah al-illa, ashbah al-illa. Okay, so let's see in terms of distribution, in, in terms of pronunciation, how do we actually pronounce the sounds wa and ya? When these sounds are produced, there is no obstruction to the airflow, as it is the case in the pronunciation of vowels. If you remember, our basic distinction between vowels and consonants was based on the fact that vowels are produced when the air flow goes out freely without being obstructed or obstacled by the speech organs. That's why we call it a free, a free pronunciation. That is, there is no obstruction. And the, uh, the, uh, the sounds where and yeah actually are pronounced in this way. It means they are pronounced with no obstruction to the air flow. That's why we say they are phonetically just like vowels, because they are pronounced in the same way vowels are pronounced. They are approximate, as I said a minute ago, because there is an approximation between the speech organs, but there is no clear contact between them, and the air goes out freely. Okay, so why do we call them approximate? Because Speech organs approximate each other, that is to come close to each other, but there is no clear contact between them, and the air can go out freely. Okay? We pronounce wa and ya without obstruction to the airflow, uh, as is the case with the pronunciation of all vowels. Okay? This is from a phonetic point of view. Let's try pronouncing the sound wa, wa, wa. In the pronunciation of the sound wa, that is the sound wa, what do we have? The lips approximate each other without having clear contact. So we don't have the contact, uh, 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 actually the, the contact we have in p or m or b, okay, which are bilabial uh, sounds that require uh, lips to be pressed together. In the pronunciation of wa, 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 we can hardly feel any contact between the, between the two lips. That's why this is called an approximate sound, because the lips approximate each other, but there is no clear contact, and the air can go out without obstruction. So wa is a bilabial sound, it's an approximate sound, and it is voiced. It is voiced, okay? This is with the pronunciation of wa. Now, 
What about the pronunciation of Y, which is another approximate or semi-vowel we have in English? The tongue is raised to approximate the area between the end of the alveolar ridge and the beginning of the heart palate. That's why Y is not alveolar if we want to be accurate and more exact about it. It is called post-alveolar, post-alveolar, which means that the tongue is raised to be in contact not with the alveolar ridge and not with the heart palate, but between with actually the area between the end of the alveolar ridge and the beginning of the heart palate. That's why we call it post-alveolar sound. Okay, again, when we pronounce yeah, 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 we do not feel that the tongue is in clear contact with the roof of the mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the tongue actually slightly approximate the roof of the mouth. So then, yeah, it's a post alveolar, it's an approximate sound, and voiced. So both of them are voiced, both of them are approximate. But this one is bilabial and here yeah, is post alveolar. <clears throat> now, that's why we ask the, the, we ask the question here: In what way the sounds where and here yeah resemble vowels? Actually, they resemble vowels in the fact that they are pronounced without obstruction to the airflow. The airflow can go out freely. That's why they are just like vowels. This is all uh, 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 phonetics, okay? Now, in terms of phonology, we need to talk about the distribution of these sounds. Where do we find where and yeah? Okay? Actually, where and yeah have a consonantal distribution. That is, uh, they are distributed as if they are consonants, even though their pronunciation is like vowels. What does consonantal distribution mean? It means that these two sounds are treated as consonants. More specifically, when we talk about the, the syllable, this is the sigma that represents the syllable. This is the syllable, okay? In terms of the syllable structure, actually we have the onset and rhyme we have the rhyme subdivided into nucleus coda okay and under the onset we often find consonants okay consonants let's make consonants in green color and here we have under the nucleus we have vowels let's have them in this color and under the coda we have also what we have also consonants. Uh, so the word wind is uh, uh, syllabified in this way. The onset is wa, the nucleus is e, the coda uh, is made up of two sounds, na and da. Wind, wind. Now we can clearly see that the wa is under the onset position which is usually a place occupied by consonants, not vowels. The only place we can find vowels in is under the nucleus, under the nucleus. This is the nucleus of the syllable, while the onset and the coda are always uh, occupied by consonants. So whenever you see sounds here under the onset or here, under the coda, directly realize that these are consonants. And whenever you find any sound under the nucleus, you can clearly and directly say that this is a vowel. This is a vowel. Okay? Again, we have another example. Now, I'm going to uh, do the same job. I'm going to make the consonants under the onset and the coda in green and make the vowel that is the nucleus in the in this chrism i don't know purple color so yeah is found here again under the onset position there which is also a consonant under the coda and the vowel is found here 
under the nucleus. Yod, 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 yod. So ye yeah is again under the onset. By the use of the structure of the syllable, we can tell for sure that wa and ye yeah are consonants. Why? Because in the syllable structure, we often find them under the onset position which is a position occupied by consonants, not by vowels. If we have the wa and ya here or here, it means they are vowels. But we cannot find a word in English that has ya and wa as the nucleus. Now, we have two other uh, ways to actually prove uh, that wa and ya are uh, consonants in terms of distribution rather than vowels. So let's talk about the articles a and n. All of you know that these articles are used uh, before nouns or before adjectives plus nouns and we use a when the, when the noun or the word uh, uh, after the a starts with a consonant and we use n when the word after uh, uh, after um, a or an uh, starts with uh, with a vowel. So whenever we have a, a, a word with a consonant, we use a. Whenever we have a word with a vowel, we use an. So how do we deal with words that start with wa and ye? Do we regard them as uh, consonants or vowels? Actually, let's try. If we say Week, do we say a week or an week? Definitely, we say a week. A week. So this means that we is is a consonant. Correct. So if it is a vowel, we should have an. Again, yacht. Uh, again, here we say a yacht. So. This is, or this means that, yeah, is what is a consonant. Can we say an yacht? It's even difficult to pronounce. So this is another way to prove that uh, yeah and we are, are consonants, not vowels. If they were vowels, we should say an weak, an yacht. There is also another way to prove that uh, uh, wa and ye are consonants, which is the pronunciation of the word the, the article the. You know that the article the can be pronounced in two different ways. We can pronounce it as the with e, and we can pronounce it as the with a schwa, the. Okay? Two different pronunciations. It depends on what? If the following word starts with a vowel, we should say the. If the following sound starts with a consonant, we should say the. Now, how do we pronounce these? The weak or the weak. Actually, we say the, the weak. Okay? So we take this pronunciation here and also here. So the weak and the yacht. The year, not the year. Okay? And this is also another, uh, uh, another way to prove that we and ye are consonants, at least phonologically, in terms of distribution. So we can deal with we and ye in two different ways. The first one is to say they are th that they are phonetically uh, uh, vowels, and we can uh, prove that by the actual pronunciation of these sounds. So when we produce them, we don't have obstruction to the airflow, and we can phonologically uh, uh, prove that ye yeah and we are consonants and this is uh, this can be done through uh, the use of the syllable and the use of a an the indefinite articles and the definite article the that's why we and ye are problematic because they are phonetically like vowels but phonologically like consonants and sometimes we call them semi vowels approximate semi vowels and glidings these are the terms often used to describe where and yet. Thank you very much for listening and bye-bye.